Today, let us share the Word of God under the subject, Bad Habits and Good Habits. Through the Bible, let us learn that the heavenly people must be born again with spiritual habits while getting rid of physical habits in order to go to heaven. If we had any wrong or bad habits, or the habits that we haven't gotten rid of although we know that they are bad, let us all get rid of them today and be born again as people who can go to heaven. It is said that a habit is second nature. Humans are born with some kind of nature. Some are diligent, some are lazy, some are idle. Some people like putting off things that they should do today till tomorrow, and some don't like working. People have their own habits. Among them, some are good habits, and some are bad habits. In other words, there are habits that can lead us to heaven and habits that cannot lead us to heaven. 3,500 years ago, in the time of Moses, among the Israelites, there were people who had a habit of grumbling. Because of those people, most of the men 20 years old or more were destroyed in the desert. You know this story very well. They grumbled about not having water and about not having food. God gave them abundant food, but then they grumbled about having the same food every day. We must get rid of the habit of grumbling. When viewed spiritually, this earth is the city of refuge, isn't it? In the city of refuge, we cannot do whatever we want to do, and we cannot have everything as much as we please. The expression, city of refuge, is somewhat beautified. To express it more realistically, it is a prison, right? It is a spiritual prison where sinners have gathered. If we can do whatever we want to do, and if we can have whatever we want to have, then it is not a prison. It is not an attitude of repentance for all the sins that we have committed in heaven. In prison, there are many inconveniences and difficulties. Sometimes, we have to do things that we don't want to do in order for the people around us to feel at peace and comfort. Sometimes, we have to do things that don't fit our personalities because it is the prison of our spirits. Nevertheless, if we argue with each other just because of different personalities and complain about our surroundings, then we can never go to the kingdom of God. In John chapter 3, Jesus said, unless he is born again. In other words, unless he changes his habits into the heavenly habits, then what happens? Can he enter the kingdom of God? Jesus said, he cannot enter it. We have so many habits. When it comes to God's Word, some people have a habit of obeying it 100%. And some try to rationalize themselves by thinking, God is saying that, but He will forgive me and do things as they please. When God tells people to do something, if there are some that don't want to do that, then they look at other people's examples and say, he did like this, but nothing happened to him. It's a bad habit. Let us see what result was given to those who had a habit of disobeying God's word in the 40-year desert life. This morning, let us study with what kind of habit and what kind of faith 
we should live in this age walking in the spiritual desert of faith. Let's take a look at Jeremiah chapter 22. Chapter 22, verse 21. I warned you when you felt secure, but you said, I will not listen. All surroundings were peaceful and safe. God made all conditions secure in His protection. In that kind of environment, God warned them, but they said, I will not listen. But you said, I will not listen. This has been your what? Your way, that is, habit, from your youth. You have not obeyed me. Since it's been their way, their habit, can they be given grace, blessing, and mercy? Grace can never be given to this kind of people. When you take a look at the history of the kings of Israel, there was a king named Saul. At first, Saul had a good faith in God. He depended on God and loved the people of Israel. So God put him on the king's throne. However, after becoming king, he began a habit of disobeying God, although he knew that he should follow God's word. When people said this and that, he thought of what the people said more highly than God's word, thinking the opinions of people were higher than the instructions of God, he disobeyed God's word in the end. God pointed out, not listening to my voice has been your habit. You are accustomed to that habit. With this kind of bad habit, we cannot enter the kingdom of God. Eventually, King Saul's sons all died in the battle against the Philistines, and the king too was killed there miserably. Such an unfortunate thing happened. Let's see 1 Chronicles chapter 10, verse 13. Saul died because, what was the reason? Because he was how? He was unfaithful to the Lord. He did not keep the word of the Lord and even consulted a medium for guidance and did not inquire of the Lord. So the Lord did what? The Lord put him to death and turned the kingdom over to David, son of Jesse. Saul had a good faith in God at first. However, as he was given power, as his people obeyed him, whenever he told them to do something, he began to think that things would go well with his influence even if he didn't have God, which made him have a habit of disobeying the word of God. As a result, he became an unfortunate king who was miserably killed in the battle against the Philistines and so were his children. So the Bible says, since Saul did not depend on God or keep the word of God and even consulted mediums like magicians or sorceresses for guidance and did not inquire of God, God destroyed him and turned the kingdom over to David, son of Jesse. Saul was accustomed to bad habits. At first, he had a good will, but his surroundings and conditions kept inducing him to have bad habits. Everybody, whatever God tells us, we must never be evaluated by God like the way the Israelites were in Jeremiah chapter 22, verse 21, where God said, 
not obeying God's word has been your way from your youth. Behind the death of King Saul, which you know about very well, there was his disobedience as it is written in 1 Samuel chapter 15. Now we all must get rid of bad habits that cannot lead us to heaven and the habit of disobeying God's word. We must not keep those habits, although we know that we must get rid of them. If we're determined to get rid of them, we must completely throw them away. If we want to destroy them, we must destroy them thoroughly. If we say, I will get rid of them one by one, it is the same as saying, I'm not going to get rid of them, though they are bad habits blocking our way to heaven. Let's see 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 3. Now go, attack the Amalekites and totally destroy everything that belongs to them. Do not spare them. Put to death men and women, children and infants, cattle and sheep, camels and donkeys. So Saul summoned the men and mustered them at Telaim, 200,000 foot soldiers and 10,000 men from Judah. Saul went to the city of Amalek and set an ambush in the ravine. Then he said to the Kenites, Go away, leave the Amalekites, so that I do not destroy you along with them. For you showed kindness to all the Israelites when they came up out of Egypt. So the Kenites moved away from the Amalekites. Like this, they destroyed all the Amalekites as God had told them. Verse 7. Then Saul attacked the Amalekites all the way from Havilah to Shur, to the east of Egypt. He took Agog, king of the Amalekites, alive, and all his people he totally destroyed with the sword. But Saul and the army spared Agog, and the best of the sheep and cattle, the fat calves and the lambs, everything that was good. These they were unwilling to destroy completely, but everything that was despised and weak, they totally destroyed. Then the word of the Lord came to Samuel. I am grieved that I have made Saul king, because he has turned away from me and has not carried out my instructions. Samuel was troubled, and he cried out to the Lord all that night. Early in the morning, Samuel got up and went to meet Saul, but he was told, Saul has gone to Carmel. There he has set up a monument in his own honor and has turned and gone on down to Gilgal. When Samuel reached him, Saul said, The Lord bless you. I have carried out the Lord's instructions. It seemed like he was obeying God, but in actuality, he wasn't obeying God completely. He didn't see correctly what he was doing. In verse 22, let's see what answer Samuel gave regarding it. But Samuel replied, Does the Lord delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as much as in obeying the voice of the Lord? To obey is better than what? Better than sacrifice. Saul said, I set some sheep and other animals aside and didn't destroy them so that I can sacrifice to God. But Samuel said, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to heed is better than the fat of rams. For rebellion is like the sin of divination, and arrogance like the evil of idolatry. Because you have rejected the word of the Lord, he has rejected you as king. Because of this reason, as we can see in 1 Chronicles chapter 10, verse 13, all the family of King Saul were destroyed in the war, and David became king. We can see this in the history of Israel. God pointed out, not listening to my voice has been your habit from your youth. Today, let's remember this warning of God. From this moment, let us reflect on ourselves and think what kind of habits we must have. Wrong habits brought about destruction, death, and the loss of a glorious position. However, in Revelation chapter 14, we can see a group of people 
who have very good habits. Let's move on to Revelation chapter 14, verse 4. These are those who did not defile themselves with women, for they kept themselves pure. And what do they do wherever the Lamb goes? They always follow the Lamb's will and follow Him wherever He goes. This cannot be done unless they have complete faith and trust in Him, right? They follow the Lamb wherever He goes. They were purchased from among men and offered as firstfruits to God and the Lamb. They have been offered to God. What do these people who have been offered to God do wherever the Lamb goes? They follow the Lamb. It means they have 100% faith in the Lamb, right? Having 100% faith in God, whether God leads them to a thorny path or a rocky path or under the scorching heat, they follow God with thankfulness wherever God leads them. They don't complain or grumble about this and that. Actually, it is already inconsistent that sinners who are in prison should complain and grumble, isn't it? In Revelation chapter 14, we can see these people follow God with joy and gratitude wherever He leads them. God blessed these people by calling them people who were redeemed from the earth and who were offered as firstfruits to God and the Lamb. Today, we must obey God's word and find joy in keeping it. If we often followed our bad habits before because we didn't have that faith, then now let us make a resolution to follow whatever God tells us to do and follow that path with joy and thanks and reach the eternal kingdom of heaven. Those who are mentioned in Revelation chapter 14 as the people who have been redeemed from the earth have very good habits. They don't have disobedience, disbelief, doubt, or quarrel. They are all being made complete in God's Word. Then let's think about the Bible, which God has given us as the most basic manual for our habits. Let's go to 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 3. If anyone teaches false doctrines and does not agree to the sound instruction of our Lord Jesus Christ and to godly teaching, he is conceited. In other words, if we do not regard God's word as absolute, if we do not agree to the instruction, what happens to us? We become conceited. We need to know that this is also one of the reasons why we must study God's Word, reflect on ourselves, and have time of introspection every day. Verse 4. He is conceited and understands nothing. He has an unhealthy interest in controversies and quarrels about words that result in envy, strife, malicious talk, evil suspicions. These kinds of people become corrupt as they keep doing these things. Instead of following God wherever He goes, these people like quarrels and become conceited, and malicious talk and evil suspicions keep controlling their souls. Verse 5 says that they are men of corrupt mind, and what are they robbed of in the end? They are robbed of the truth. People who have bad habits come to have corrupt minds in the end, and they come to have a habit of taking God's word lightly and disobey once, twice, three, and four times. They think, although I didn't do what God said, God didn't punish me. Everything is going well with my family. 
It seems okay to regard the Bible as some kind of food for thought. As long as I stay in Zion until the end, even though I fall back, I will enter heaven. What does it mean to follow God? It means that we put His Word into practice, obey His Word every day, doesn't it? God said that He won't rebuke us for the things that we didn't do because we didn't know. However, God said that people who do something that they know they shouldn't do cannot avoid God's judgment. So here it is written, He is conceited and understands nothing. He has an unhealthy interest in controversies and quarrels about words that result in envy, strife, malicious talk, evil suspicions, and constant friction between men of corrupt mind who have been robbed of the truth and who think that godliness is a means to financial gain. But godliness with contentment is great gain, for we brought nothing into the world, and we can take nothing out of it. But if we have food and clothing, we will be content with that. Through the Bible, God has already made known to us what will become of their future if they do not regard all the teachings and instructions of God as absolute. They become conceited and come to have corrupt minds and end up being robbed of the truth. Then those people leave God in the end. Such an unfortunate thing happens to those people. Everybody, let us reflect on ourselves from this moment today and let's see whether or not we have habits that God is pleased with. If we unknowingly have a bad habit, even a little, we must cut that part out from today. We must get rid of all of that and fill that spot with God's holy words and run towards the kingdom of heaven with faith all the more, right? This can be seen very well in the history of Samuel. In 1 Samuel chapter 2, we can see sons of two representative but contrasting families. Hannah's son, Samuel, and Eli's sons, Hophni and Phinehas. They were very contrasting. Hophni and Phinehas were sons of a priest, but they despised God. They took offerings and worshipped very lightly and did not follow God's statutes and despised God a lot. However, Samuel served God with all his heart and honored God. Although they lived in the same age, the thoughts of Samuel and those of Eli's two sons, Hophni and Phinehas, were completely opposite from each other. Samuel had a habit of honoring God since his childhood. Hophni and Phinehas were born to a priest, and all the people showed them respect since the time they were born. Since they lived this kind of life, all their lives they had evil habits. They despised God and took God's offerings lightly. They also changed the regulations as they wanted and didn't think much of it. It was a great sin and evil habit in God's eyes. As they continued to do so, Eli died as he fell backward off a chair and broke his neck, and his two sons, Hophni and Phinehas, died miserably in the war. We can see how their lives ended in the Bible. We can also confirm in the Bible how Samuel, who honored God since his childhood, lived a truly gracious life as God's priest until the end. Let's read 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 12. Eli's sons were wicked men. They had no regard for the Lord. Now it was the practice of the priest with the people that whenever anyone offered a sacrifice and while the meat was being boiled, 
the servant of the priest would come with a three-pronged fork in his hand. He would plunge it into the pan or kettle or cauldron or pot, and the priest would take for himself whatever the fork brought up. This is how they treated all the Israelites who came to Shiloh. It is the first rule in sacrifice that all offerings are offered to God first. But these two sons of Eli took the offerings first, even before offering them to God. But even before the fat was burned, the servant of the priest would come and say to the man who was sacrificing, Give the priest some meat to roast. He won't accept boiled meat from you, but only raw. If the man said to him, Let the fat be burned up first, and then take whatever you want, the servant would answer, No, hand it over now. If you don't, I'll take it by force. This sin of the young men was very great in the Lord's sight, for they were treating the Lord's offering with what? With contempt. These were the deeds of Eli's two sons, Hophni and Phinehas. They had this evil habit since they were young. They took the worship to God lightly and neglected it. As they grew up like this, they committed wicked deeds against the regulations and did things that were inappropriate in God's eyes. On the contrary, in verse 18 it is written, But Samuel was ministering before the Lord, a boy wearing a linen ephod. Since Samuel was young, he always learned to live a godly life to fear God. Eli's sons were accustomed to the habit of despising God since they were little. And Samuel was accustomed to the habit of honoring God since he was a boy. So God led one to blessing and led the other two to eternal punishment at the end of their lives. Although Eli was a priest, he faced a miserable result of dying as his neck broke because of his sons, and his two sons suffered miserable death in the war. On the other hand, Samuel lived with the habit of honoring God since he was a boy. So God was always with him and blessed him all his life. Also, we can see in the Bible that God blessed him to anoint David, who became the second king of Israel. David, who was anointed to be the second king of Israel, loved God so much. Since he loved God so much, what did God say about David? God said, He is a man after my own heart, meaning He really pleased God. He is a man after my own heart. God complimented David and let us know about his life. From today, let us check ourselves, thinking, what are some of my habits that are obstacles in my way to heaven? Have I not neglected God's words, not regarding them as absolute? Let's go to Psalm chapter 23, verse 1. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. With this one expression, David's heart was expressed fully. David acutely felt that he could rule over the kingdom, which God entrusted to him whenever God was with him, and that the kingdom could be rich and powerful when God was with him and that the enemies would fear him when God was with him, and that he was nothing if God wasn't with him. God's word was always top priority in his life. Since he had this good habit, David thought that he should build a temple to serve God, which was something no one else thought about. He thought, it is not right that God is dwelling in a tent made with curtains, 
while I'm living in a luxurious palace. So he thought, I need to build a gracious temple for God. When he thought that, God was truly pleased with David's heart and blessed his wish to come true by letting his son Solomon complete the temple. Didn't he? David had a habit of loving God, whether he was singing, managing the country, or taking care of the governmental affairs. Once the Ark of God, which was staying at Obed-Edom's house, was moved to the city of David, David was very happy. He was so happy that he jumped up and down with joy more than little children and took off his robe and danced. He did that because he was so joyful for the amazing fact that God was coming to his palace. Thinking of David, who had a habit of loving God like this, let us also have a gracious habit like David's and a habit like Samuel's toward God in this age and get rid of all bad habits like the one Saul had and like the ones Eli's two sons, Hophni and Phinehas, had, right? That's why the Bible tells us to be reborn. God says, get rid of all the wrong habits you have had in the past and get accustomed to the habits that the heavenly people must have. Let's see Ephesians chapter 4, verse 15. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will in all things grow up into Him who is the head, that is, Christ. It means that we must have a habit of speaking the truth in love, right? Let's go to verse 22. You were taught with regard to your former way of life to do what? Put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires. When it says put off your old self, it means that we must get rid of ourselves that we're accustomed to wrong habits. We must put off our old self that lives according to the old ways, the old habits, to be made new in the attitude of your minds and to put on the new self created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. We should always think what are the things that we should have as heavenly people? What does the Bible teach us? How does the Bible say that we ought to live? And we need to repeat good habits over and over again. Habit becomes our second nature. If we have a habit of disobeying, and disobey once, twice, three times, and four times, we become more bold later. And we become numb so that we can no longer think that disobedience is sin. We must get rid of this kind of habit. Verse 23, to be made new in the attitude of your minds according to all God's teachings and instructions and to put on the new self created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. Therefore, each of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to his neighbor, for we are all members of one body. In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry, and do not give the devil a foothold. All these are habits that we must have. He who has been stealing must steal no longer, but must work, doing something useful with his own hands, that he may have something to share with those in need. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. What should we do about these things? God said, get rid of them. We must get rid of all these habits. Get rid of all these things and be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other just as in Christ God forgave you. 
When we do this, let's see chapter 5, verse 1, which is a continuation. Be imitators of God, therefore as dearly loved children. Whose imitators should we be? Imitators of God. It says, God has been doing this, so you must be the heavenly children who do the same. Let us all be the children of Zion who get rid of all the wrong habits we had in the past and be clothed again with the habits of the heavenly people who will go to heaven. Think of Saul. Although he was chosen by God, he could not stay chosen forever. His wrong habit made him grow away from God and let him leave God in the end. Everybody, I hope that we always reflect on ourselves to see whether or not we have a bad habit and have a habit of always obeying God and follow God wherever He goes. As God said in Ephesians chapter 4, let us all get rid of the old self that follows our former way of life and remain in God and see how God lived and follow His examples. I ask you to be the heavenly family members who can do that. By doing that, let us bear many good fruits. I ask for many prayers and support from you so that more Zions can be established throughout the world and we can carry out the mission of the true church that spreads God's love. Hoping you received much grace through these words, I'd like to conclude today's sermon. Thank you very much.